Hi and welcome in this new video. My name is Mark Lamarty, Head of Customer Education at Astronomer, best-selling instructor on Udemy. And if you don't want to miss anything about Airflow, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. That will help me a lot and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. In this video, you will set up a local development environment with Airflow and Spark. You will run a PySpark script with Airflow. And more importantly, you will discover that the Spark Summit operator is not the best way to run a PySpark code. So without further ado, let's begin. To set up the local development environment, we will use Docker. So make sure that you have Docker installed on your computer and ensure that you have enough disk space because installing Spark in a Docker container takes a lot of space. So make sure that you have enough free disk space on Docker, as you can see here. So once you have that, the next step is either to use the official Docker Compose file of Airflow or to try the Astro CLI. I'm not going to say that because I'm working at Astronomer, but I truly believe that the Astro CLI is the easiest and fastest way to run Airflow. So if you don't know the Astro CLI, you don't have to be an Astronomer customer for it, try it. You're going to save a lot of time. And if you take a look at the documentation, you will know exactly how to install the CLI according to your operating system. It's very straightforward and you will get a local development environment running Airflow, following best practices out of the box. I'm going to use the Astro CLI in the video, but regardless, it's going to work exactly the same. Everything you will see in that video will apply to you if you use the official Docker Compose file. Okay, now create a new folder. So let's say Airflow PySpark and go into that new folder and open your favorite code editor. In my case, it is Visual Studio Code. Then in your code editor, you can open a new terminal and in that terminal, if you use the Airflow Docker Compose file, then you have to download it and run the Docker Compose file with Docker Compose up. But if you use the Astro CLI, which is my case, you can type Astro dev in it in order to create your local development environment following best practices. And as you can see on the left, now I have a bunch of files and folders that have been generated automatically for me. With that, the next step is to create a new YAML file called docker compose override.yaml. And in that file, you need to copy and paste the following code. By the way, you will find everything you need in the description below. So this describes two additional Docker containers that, that you want to install and run along with your Airflow Docker containers. So we have the Spark Master and the Spark Worker. There are two important things to note here. The first one is, if you carefully take a look, those two Docker containers are using the same network, Airflow, which is the network by default that the Airflow Docker containers use as well. So you have to make sure that those two Docker containers, Spark Worker and Spark Master, use the same network as the Airflow Docker containers. Otherwise, you will have issues to run your PySpark script. Also, as you can see here, I have a volume for the Spark Master container which is the same volume that you can find under the Spark Worker container. And you have to make sure that this volume exists as well for your Airflow Docker containers. So in this case, I'm mapping the include folder that I have here at the path slash user slash local slash Airflow slash include. Again, if you use the official Docker Compose file, just make sure that you are mapping one folder from your local machine that could be include into your Docker containers and that is common to your Spark containers and Airflow containers. We will use the include folder to put the data that the PySpark script will have to read. So that's why you have to make sure that this include folder is shared across all of your Docker containers, Spark and Airflow. In the real world, instead of having a local directory, you would have an object storage system like S3 or GCS. At this point, we're able to run Spark along with Airflow in Docker, but we are not done yet. Indeed, you need to install Java. And for that, you have to open the Docker file and then you add the following lines. This will install Java in every Docker container, so for Airflow and Spark, and also it will set the Java home. If you don't do that, you will have errors when you will try to run your PySpark script with Airflow. If you use the Airflow official Docker Compose file, in this case, you will have to create a new Docker file next to your Docker Compose file. Then in that Docker file, you add the following lines as well. 
but instead of using Astro here, you put Airflow, and obviously the from should be different, you should use the official Docker image of Airflow with a specific version. And then in the Docker Compose file, you have to change the image with image build and then dot to use your Docker file. All right, now we can open the include folder and in that folder, we create a new file that has CSV and we can add the following lines. Again, you will find that in the link in the description below. In addition, we can create a new folder. Let's call it scripts and a new file read.py. And in that Python script, you add the following code. And this code is pretty basic. As you can see, we create a Spark session with the following name, and then we read the CSV file, data CSV that we've just created. So very straightforward, nothing crazy. It is a very simple PySpark script. So with that, we are ready to run our local development environment and see if we're able to run Airflow with Spark. So for that, you can type astro dev start in the terminal. So hit that and wait a little bit. So as you can see, Docker is gonna download the Docker images corresponding to Spark. So it's gonna take a few minutes. And after four or five minutes, you should be able to access the Airflow UI. Then you type admin admin if you use the Astro CLI and you should land on this page. You can verify that all of your Docker containers are running as expected by looking at Docker desktop and if you expand this, you should see all of those Docker containers corresponding to Spark and your Airflow instance up and running and in green. Something that I almost forgot, if you use macOS in the Docker file here, you should use ARM64, but if you use Windows, it might be AMD64. You will know if you need one or the other as soon as you run the PySpark script from Airflow. If you get an error saying that Java is not found, this might be the cause. Congratulations, at this point, you have successfully set up your local development environment to run Airflow with Spark. Now it is time to discover how to run a PySpark script with Airflow and then the new way of doing that. So let's get started. The first step is to open the DAX folder. And then if you use the Astro CLI, you can remove the DAG example and create a new DAG, my DAG, PY. Then you can make the following imports, the decorators, DAG and task. If you don't know what I'm talking about, take a look at the task free PI. Then date time for the start date, if we need to define one. And then the DAG, some parameters. So let's say schedule to known. And in fact, as we set schedule to known, we don't have to set a start date here. And then catch up to false. We create the DAG function. So let's say my DAG, and then we call my DAG at the end. Now to create a task Spark Summit operator, you have to do a few things. And the first one is honestly to go to the documentation, but here you have to copy the name of the provider, the Spark provider. And then you can see that the version is 4.11.3 and then go back to your project and in the requirements, install the provider, which is 4.11.3. Okay, if you don't do that, you won't be able to use the Spark Summit operator and you won't be able to create a Spark connection on the Airflow UI. So it is very important that you install the corresponding provider. Then you can make the following import, which is from Airflow, providers, and then Apache Spark, operators, spark submit, and then the spark submit operator. Then you create the task. So let's say read data equals to the spark submit operator with the task ID read data. Then the application you want to run on spark. In this case, it is the script. So include scripts and then read.py, okay? So this is the PySpark script that we have right there. And then we define the connection ID, which is, let's say, my Spark con, in order to connect to Spark to run the PySpark script. And finally, we can set verbose to true so we get additional information if something goes wrong in the logs. 
and we call read data. That's it. Just like that, you are able to run a PySpark script using the Spark Submit operator. You still have to restart your Airflow instance to install the provider. In fact, if you look at the Airflow UI, you will see that error indicating that the module Airflow Providers Apache doesn't exist because we haven't installed the provider yet. And if you go to admin and connections and then try to create a new connection with the connection type Spark, you can't find it. So let's install that provider. And for that, in the terminal, we can type astro dev restart to restart the Airflow instance. Okay, Airflow is up and running again. And I just made a typo here. It is application then save the file. Let's go back to the Airflow UI and refresh the page. And now the error is gone. Next, we need to go to admin and connections because we have to create a new connection to connect to Spark. So let's add a new record and we can call it my Spark con as defined in the task. Then the connection type is Spark and the host is Spark slash slash and then spark dash master. You will find that in your Docker desktop. As you can see here, we have this Docker container spark master. So that's why we use the name of the container as the host right here. And the port is 7077. Again, you can see that right there. And that's it. You can keep the other fields by default. You click on save. And now let's go back to the DAGs. Click on it and let's see if it works. So we run the DAG and look at the graph view. Let's refresh the page. Okay, it looks like it runs. You can take a look at the logs. And obviously Spark produces a lot of logs. So let's see if we're gonna be able to run the script. And as you can see, it has successfully been executed and we can see the data right there that we have in the CSV file. So congratulations because you have just being able to execute a Spark job from Airflow with the Spark Submit operator. It is as simple as that. Finally, it is time to show you the new way of running a Spark job with Airflow. And in my opinion, it is the best and easiest way. So let's go back to the DAG and remove the task. And now we are going to use a decorator. If you don't know what I'm talking about, take a look at the Taskflow API. It is a new way of writing your DAGs that I'm sure you're gonna love. So first you have to use the task decorator like that and then dot pi spark and you pass the connection ID to spark which is my spark con. Then under the decorator you define a python function the pi spark script that you want to run. So here let's say read data that takes two parameters the first one is a spark session object and then a spark context object. You have to pass those two parameters. And now let's say this task returns a pandas data frame like that. And finally, we can add the following code in order to create this data frame, then show it and finally return it. As we use those two parameters, we still have to import the spark session and the spark context objects. So at the top of the DAG, you can type from PySpark import spark context and then from PySpark.sql import spark session. And last but not least, you need to import pandas. So you type pandas as pd like that. And don't forget to call the task at the end read data as we are using a decorator, so you have to do that. And just like that, you have successfully created a task executing a PySpark script using the decorator PySpark. And I like this way because you just have to define the code that you want to run on Spark just under the decorator. So in my opinion, it is easier to read and to write. So once you have that, you can save the file. And then if you go back to the Airflow UI, you will see an error, this one, and you actually have to install this provider. Here, install the following provider. Then save the file, restart your Airflow instance with Astro Dev Restart. Now Airflow is up and running. If you go back to the UI, then refresh the page, the error is gone. Let's click on the DAG, trigger it again, just to see if it works. Let's wait a little bit. Okay, you can see that the task is running. We can take a look at the logs.
and you can see the data frame as expected. So congratulations, because now you know exactly how to set up Airflow with Spark locally, how to run a PySpark script using the Spark Summit operator, and more importantly, how to run code on Spark using the PySpark decorator. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Take care and see you soon.